Just as Justin Trudeau is the head of the Liberal Party and Erin O'Toole is the head of the Conservative Party, the Green Party has just elected a brand new leader. Her name is Annamie Paul, and she's the first new leader the Green Party has had in over 10 years. She's replacing longtime leader Elizabeth May. So what does this new leader say about the Green Party in 2020? What does Annamie Paul stand for? Is the Green Party too small to even think about? Let's take a look. Hi, you're watching Gabby on Government. I'm Gabby and I'm an ordinary Canadian on a journey to learn about my government. I'm so happy you're joining me on today's journey where I'll be talking about the new Green Party leader, Annamie Paul. Before we get into a conversation about Paul, I want to start with a quick overview of the Green Party. Since it's the smallest major party in Canada, only holding three federal seats out of 338, the Greens can fade into the background compared to the other four big parties. But the Green Party actually has more support than is shown by their seats in Parliament. From the 2019 election results, you can see the Green Party got 6% of the popular vote, the raw percentage of the people who vote throughout Canada, but only 1% of the seats. How is this possible? It all comes down to our voting system and strategic voting, both topics for another day. If Canada had a fairer voting system, that 6% popular vote could translate to 20 seats, about the same as the NDP currently holds. All of this to say that the Greens in Canada have a decent amount of support, even if it doesn't look that way by the number of seats they have. The Green Party is actually a global movement that started in the 70s. There are Green Parties in over 90 countries. Green Parties around the world started with the environment as its focus, but now most of the parties cover the full spectrum of political issues. The Canadian 2019 Green Party platform had a big focus on environmental issues, but covered all traditional policy areas like international relations, healthcare, and social issues. In 2020, I think it's safe to say that the Green Party of Canada is a legitimate party that is growing in popularity. After all, they tripled their seats in the 2019 election. After 13 years of leadership, Elizabeth May stepped down shortly after the 2019 election, triggering a leadership contest. In my humble opinion, if you want some of your faith restored in politics, you should look into the Green leadership race. The debates were actual, real debates that allowed me to learn and shape my views. You know, what debates are supposed to do. <laughs> the eight candidates had a diverse range of careers. Judy Green was in the Canadian Forces and a software engineer. Amita Kuttner is an astrophysicist. Glenn Murray was a Liberal MP and the Mayor of Winnipeg. Courtney Howard is a physician in Yellowknife. All of the candidates had really interesting, sometimes downright amazing personal histories and accomplishments. The Greens went to the online polls and after eight rounds of a ranked ballot vote, that's the maximum number of rounds, meaning the vote was tight, Anime Paul emerged the victor. Anime's win is historic because she is the first black leader of a major federal party. Her acceptance speech was powerful, certainly worth a watch. The Green Party blazes the paths that other parties follow. And this is the moment where this kind of innovative, evidence-based, daring, political policy thinking is absolutely necessary. So who is this new Green Party leader? What's she all about? Annamie Paul was born in 1972 and raised in downtown Toronto. Paul's parents are from Nevis and Dominica, both countries in the Caribbean, and moved to Canada in the 60s. Her mother arrived as a live-in domestic, but earned a bachelor, master's, and teaching degree. She taught in downtown Toronto for over 30 years. Paul's father seems to have lived a reasonably prominent life in Toronto's Black community. He co-founded several organizations in the GTA and was a personal friend of the Prime Minister of Dominica, where he's from. Paul grew up with two brothers and a sister who is a Canadian actress. A fun fact about Annamie is that she is a twin. Paul's exposure to politics started early in life when she worked as a page in the Ontario Legislature at the age of 12. 
In government, a page is kind of like a water boy. They pick up documents, act as a messenger, and literally bring water to legislators. Around the same time, Annamie's mother would take her to rallies, strikes, and protests in her community. When it came to academic life, Paula proved herself as a smart cookie. She received a Bachelor of Law from the University of Ottawa when she was 23, and passed the bar when she was only 26. After graduating, she married her now-husband, Mark, who was an international human rights lawyer. From there, she went on to complete a master's degree in public affairs from the prestigious University Princeton in New Jersey on a full scholarship. While at Princeton, Paula had a lot going on in her personal life. She converted to her husband's religion, Judaism, making her the second Jewish federal leader in Canada. She also had her first child of two while both her and her husband were in graduate school. In an article in Chatelaine, she cites being in graduate school while having an infant as the reason she decided to go bald. The hours she spent taking care of her hair did not make the cut on her priority list. Despite neither having a child nor being in graduate school, this is something I too have considered. Since her studies, Paul has had a busy life. She worked for four years founding the Canadian Centre for Public Leadership, which supported the participation of racial minorities, women, and Aboriginal people in public leadership roles. When Paul was 33, she and her family moved to Europe, where she spent time in Belgium, the Netherlands, and Spain, working in and around public policy. Paul worked for three years for the European Union as a political affairs officer, and then went on to do all sorts of interesting work in policy and international affairs. Presumably, as a result of her international experience, Paul speaks four languages, English, French, Spanish, and Catalan. She also knows some Hebrew as a result of her conversion to Judaism. Paul's political life really began when she moved back to Toronto. She ran in the 2019 federal election in the Toronto Centre riding. The Toronto Centre riding is sort of notorious for having prominent Liberal MPs parachuted in since it's been such a safe Liberal seat in recent years and is a reasonably desirable place to live. Interestingly, MPs don't have any formal obligation to live in or really have any connection to the riding they serve. Some parties place more value than others on ensuring the candidate in a particular riding is reasonably welcome there, but the Liberals are not known as one of them. As a result, in the 2019 election, Paul was running against Bill Morneau. If that name sounds familiar, it's because he's a recent ex-cabinet minister. Ex, presumably because of the Wee scandal. He was previously essentially second in command to Trudeau himself. Against such a famous MP, Paul didn't have much of a chance, but she still managed to increase the Toronto Centre vote from about 3.5% to 7%, nearly double the votes from the previous election. So that brings us back to the Green Party leadership election after Elizabeth May stepped down. The leadership election can tell us a little bit about Paul's personal policy views, but interestingly not as much as you might think. Her philosophy seems to be that she is a spokesperson for a party who decides policy collaboratively, rather than a leader directing policy with a heavy hand. That said, Paul is a policy expert, and as such, she did sprinkle some innovative ideas into the standard issue green policy. Internally, Paul highlights plans to get more Greens elected to Parliament and to diversify what she described as Canada's least diverse major party. Externally, Paul echoes some of the Green Party's most prominent policies. The Green Party's flagship message is, of course, combating and managing climate change. One of Paul's brothers is actually a laid-off oil worker. When asked how their dinner conversations go on the agenda, Paul explains that her brother actually has a degree in environmental science, but since subsidies flow more freely to the oil and gas sector, this is where the best-paying jobs are. Paul explains the Green Party wants to end subsidies for oil companies, which give them an unfair advantage. She reminds listeners often that the Green Party is the only party that wants to exceed Canada's emissions targets to keep the planet on track to avoid runaway climate change. 
Paul wants to ensure nature is preserved and ecosystems are protected, increase environmental protections around mining, place a national ban on fracking, and accelerate the transition to a green economy. Paul also focused on the Greens policy of what they call a guaranteed livable income, a form of universal basic income, where you are automatically topped up if your income falls below a set amount. This amount is based on where you live in Canada. The Greens argue it would be simpler to administer than a traditional EI and less confusing for recipients, among other benefits. It should be noted that this is one of only many forms of universal basic income. Another area of focus for Paul and the Greens is post-secondary education. Paul is calling for college and university tuition to be free for all Canadian students and to forgive the portion of existing student debt that is held by the federal government. COVID is another issue that is obviously top of mind for Paul, and one of her main related areas of focus is on long-term care facilities. During her campaign, her father actually died in one of these facilities due to a preventable illness. Paul wants to bring long-term care under the Canada Health Act, allowing for a national strategy in this area. She also wants to expand long-term and at-home care. I won't go into more depth into Paul's policy stances because, as I said, by design, they are very similar to the Green Party's collaboratively designed platform. Paul was one of the quote-unquote centrists of the often described leftist party. I guess it's all relative. The most common critique of Paul I heard is that she is an elite, running in a party that is trying hard to shake their reputation of being made up of older, white, upper-middle-class members. It is possible that Paul has some forms of elitism in her life. Perhaps there are parts of her early years we don't know, and it could be argued that her life working in the sometime insulated world of EU policy makes her out of touch. But compared to the really undeniable elitism of some politicians like Trudeau, well, like I said, it's all relative. Now that Paul has run the gauntlet of a party leadership race, she's been thrown headfirst into perhaps an even more daunting challenge, trying to win a seat in her liberal stronghold riding in the upcoming by-election. If Paul doesn't win the seat, she'll have to move to another riding where her winning is more likely. It is possible for Paul to remain the Green Party leader without a seat. She would be the party leader, while one of the sitting MPs, presumably Elizabeth May, would be the parliamentary leader. Not ideal for the Greens, but it would work. Fun fact, you technically do not need to be a member of parliament to be the Prime Minister of Canada. So even if Annamy does not win a seat before the next election, she could still technically be the Prime Minister as the leader of her party. It has happened twice in Canada that a senator has been the Prime Minister, not an MP. Who knew? MP or not, Paul's major challenge will be to gain seats for the Greens in the next federal election scheduled for 2022. Do you think the Green Party will get more seats under her leadership? Would you ever vote for the Greens? What do you think of the new leader? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm not a civics expert, so if I got something wrong or you want to add something, let me know in the comments. I think learning about civics is super important, so if you want to help other people find my content, I would be so grateful if you would like this video, share it, and subscribe. Thanks again, and see you next time.